Okay, it's Sunday morning. Um, I took yesterday off. I mean, I was just completely exhausted. I couldn't do anything. Um, got lots of rest, lots of... Um, took a few naps, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I, I'm incapable of doing a lot. Um, so my, I dropped my daughter off, I think it was Thursday night, I believe it was Thursday, um, over at her mom's house because she was going to hang out with her, or maybe it was Wednesday night, she was going to hang out with her sister the next day because her sister had off school. Um, she hit me up the following day, she was like, can I stay the weekend because it's my little brother's birthday, so I want to stay for that. Um, well, my son, my older son hit me up, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, that's fine. You know, whatever you want to do. She's 18. I can't force her to do anything. And the last thing I'm going to do is put a guilt trip on somebody who's been guilt tripped their whole life. So, um, my other son, my oldest son, my oldest son, um, called me last night and, uh, yeah, he's, he's healing. He's doing his healing. Um, he just had to call me and get it off his chest, how sick it makes him as he's realizing how disgusting what these women have done. Um, as he's opening himself up to realize and be honest about the situation and what it is. And as he's realizing how extremely sickening what these women have done is, he just had a vent last night, so he called me up, you know, and just, just venting. Um, it's horrible, you know, these, you know, it, these women are just, oh man, it's so hard. So, you know, like I said, my ex-wife is going around acting like, you know, Sammy needs to be re-educated to be her slave that Sammy is not enough because she does not watch the kids. She doesn't do the chores. You know what I mean? Um, all the while, while she's married to a crackhead, oh, she's got a crackhead husband in the house. Um, it, it's utter chaos over there. Um, these children have never been in any kind of after school activity. Nothing, nothing. It's all about school and then home to take care of the home. And that's it. That's, that's what these kids do. Um, so, you know, it was, what was really pissing my son off was the fact that my ex-wife kept telling my, keeps telling my son how Sammy's the problem, you know, it's all Sammy's fault. And, um, he's, he's seeing the gaslighting. He's seeing what's happening now. He's seeing how this whole fucking thing works and how evil and nasty and dirty these people are and how they don't have a soul. I mean, they don't, if they have a soul, it's so buried deep inside of them that it doesn't even matter because the only thing that matters to them is their agenda and hoodwinking and lying and manipulating people to fit into their world. Um, So what had happened was uh, her crackhead husband had gone down in the basement where the girl's room was, caused a huge scene, all this stress again on the girls, punching holes in the door, you know, just stupid shit, just being an absolute crackhead. And, you know, scaring the girls, doing the same thing. I'm sure they're so used to it by now. Um, but b blaming the girls... Because my ex-wife was upstairs crying and whining about how her perfect little world is upset because she has to do things, you know, because she's got to take care of kids in her house and go to work. All a thing that she created. Um, but her slaves, you know, are not slaving enough for her. So this is what these, these um, narcissists do. You know, my ex-wife put a, a stick up her husband's ass. You know, my my life—it's so hard, and it's because of those girls. 
And then what happens? And this is what they do. They don't give a fuck. She sends a crackhead down to terrorize her daughters into being better slaves and punch holes in the door and scare them. And it's normal. And it's their fault because they're not slaves enough. They're not good enough slaves. So that story had come back. This was yesterday. And then I guess my, uh, my daughter and son's younger sister, the third in line, was talking to her brother and telling him what happened. And of course, it enraged him. And it enraged me when he called me up and told me what happened last night. I had to get off the phone with him so I could finally text my ex-wife. And tell her to stop this shit. And I wake up this morning and I got 12 text messages explaining how bad Sammy is and that and how how my wife is just a sad, sad, hardworking mom who doesn't understand. Who doesn't understand what's going on. And oh, she's working so hard to keep a roof over her head. I mean it's it's sick, guys. It's sick. It's sick. You believe these narcissistic bitches. Nasty, dirty fucking bitches. She's lying about my fucking daughter. She's creating a scenario just like my mom has always done with me my whole life. And you cocksuckers don't care. Because it's inconvenient for your fucking little worlds. My abuse, my daughter's abuse, my son's abuse is inconvenient for you cocksuckers. Fuck all of you. Fuck all of you, coddled little bitches. Fuck every single one of you. If you are unsure if I'm speaking to you, please ask me, because I am. I'm speaking to all you coddled little bitches. Every single one of you coddled little bitches. Every single one of you who want to blow off abuse and act like it's nothing. Come on over here and let me abuse you for a little while and see how you like it. Come on over here. I invite you to my home to be abused, to put yourself in our shoes. Come on over. Come on over, please. You guys don't want me talking about my abuse? You guys want to sit here and live in your fantasy world and uphold my mom as this saint, as this Jesus freak saint that has a connection to God? You guys are sick in your heads and you're lazy as fuck. You're pieces of shit. If I finally didn't if I didn't almost die nine months ago, let, let's just take this back to the beginning. Why am I even talking about this shit? Why? Well, because for the past eight years since I had my major TBI eight years ago, I've been having micro concussions every two weeks. Guess what happens when I have micro concussion? My childhood comes back to me. My abuse comes back to me. I've been reliving my abuse constantly for years. Not saying a word, trying to stay away, trying to think of anything else, trying to blame it on anything else. Until I got real with myself. Nine months ago when I started my healing, I knew I needed to do some deep fucking healing like inside psychologically and emotionally. But I knew I couldn't do it till I healed myself enough physically. And while I was healing myself physically, I was like, please, there's got to be. Are you serious? Do I really have to relive this shit and, and fix this shit? And sure enough, that's what I needed to do. Because if I didn't do it, guess what? This shit, this abuse with my daughter would be going on. Nobody would even be talking about it right now. You cocksuckers have no clue what it means to be abused. You pieces of shit. You useful idiots. Ball is sacks of shit.
These women don't care. They are playing you. They are playing everybody. And if someone is coming out and explaining this to you in perfect English, and you are going to sit there and still side with this person and act like this person has a connection to Jesus, you are sick and you need to stay away. You belong in hell with this bitch. With all these bitches. You belong in hell. That's where they belong. If they don't want to heal, if they want to continue, if they want to propound and propagate this violence and abuse onto their own children, fuck them. They belong in hell. They need to be taken away, away, so that way they don't hurt people anymore. But the problem is, is that the whole system set up on abuse. And you cocksuckers are so busy with your fucking perfect little fucking convenient, comfortable lives. You don't give a shit. Fuck every one of you. Fuck my mom. Fuck my ex-wife. Fuck anybody who wants to abuse a child, you cock-sucking bitches. My healing is extremely difficult right now because it is somewhat tied in to the current abuse that my daughter is suffering. And to sit there and just see that mirror image of abuse and to sit there and have my ex-wife text me. I tried printing. I'm having problems with my printer. I want to print off these text messages because I'm going to read them to you, cock-sucking idiots out there. You coddled little bitches who've never been abused in your fucking life. Who just want to propagate this shit. Just so that way you can have your little conveniences. I'm going to read to you what this shit does to people. You know, people like my mom and my ex-wives make me sick to my stomach. They do. But make, what makes me just as sick to my stomach is all you little bitches out there that can't fucking grab you. Don't have a nut. Don't have a fucking nut. Don't. There's no fucking nothing inside of you. You are empty as a goddamn fucking shipwreck. You guys are so sickening. Going along, covering up abuse, keeping it quiet, telling abused victims to keep quiet because it interrupts your perfect little life. Sick, man. Y'all so disgustingly sick to me. So fucking wrapped up in your breads and circuses, all the joys that this life has to offer you dumbasses. As soon as the shine goes off that thing, you're on to the next thing and on to the next thing and on to the next thing. No, fuck. You don't have any time to pay attention to somebody abuse. Are you kidding? That hurts your ears. Pathetic. Fucking pathetic. Put all this abuse right here in front of you to see for your own self what abuse does. And you still just want to tell me to shut up. Still just wish I would die, you fucking spineless little cocksuckers. Spineless, dude. Every one of you, spineless. You've allowed these bitches to fucking paint a picture of your life that's so pretty for you and so comfortable that anybody who comes along and does anything and says anything to go against that perfect little world, it just puts your panties in a bunch and ruins your day, doesn't it? You fucking pathetic, sick cocksuckers. So, yeah, I had to get that out. Um, I mean, it's just, it's nasty, dude. Like, I'm not sitting here mad. Um, like, I'm sitting here indifferent to it. Like, sort of just, if I'm anything, uh, so I'm more just feeling for my daughter and 
than anything. Um, mad, sad. Yeah, those are all feelings that I can grab onto that come with a lot of fucking shit, but it, there's no use, you know? I mean, you guys see me getting my anger out right here. Um, you know, I text my, when, when my son had told me what that crack had gone down and done to those two girls last night, you know, I got off the phone with my son and text my wife, ex-wife. And I told her, I said, look, you better fucking get a hold of that crackhead because if Sammy tells me that he scares her or threatens her, I will come up there and I will take care of the situation personally to ensure that doesn't happen again. Um, and that is what instigated her 12 text messages that I woke up to this morning that I want to print off that go all into, I mean, she has no problem going into how bad my daughter is and how good she is and how much she's doing and how my daughter is just, you know, fucking everything up. And it's the same thing my mom did to me. <laughs> and like I said, my, my daughter doesn't even defend herself. She just sits there quietly while people propagate her mom's bullshit. She doesn't defend herself. She just keeps on going. She's just sitting here in this world looking around scared to fuck. My daughter is literally sitting here in this world looking around scared to death. And my ex-wife just plays it up. Plays it up. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. 